There's a popular sentiment in the world, we hear it all the time, that uh, people don't change, people can't change. Well, you're about to see cold, hard evidence that that is not the case. And now I present to you your 2013 Parade of Transformation. He's been a tireless advocate for the cause. My name is Albert Zweig, and I'm a proud graduate of the Denver County Adult District Drug Court. Thank you. You know, I, I would like to begin by dispelling a rumor that I've heard going around. Um, I did not know what color the background was going to be when I chose this tie. It just happened that way. Um, I have a lot to get through in a very short amount of time, so I will save you all the war stories, and I will just tell you that by the time I came to drug court, I completely and totally destroyed my life with heroin and with cocaine. I'd lost everything. I was homeless. I was living on the street. I'd lost my job. I'd lost my car. I'd lost my self-respect. I'd lost the respect and the trust of my family and my friends. And I was advised shortly after my arrest that I was facing between four and 12 years in the Department of Corrections. And back in those days, they were putting people in prison for possession charges. And at that point, after a lot of deliberation, I made a really fateful decision and I decided to kill myself. And I want to make this clear because it's important. I didn't, I didn't want to die. I didn't make that decision because I was tired of life. I made that decision because I was hopeless. Because as I looked forward, I saw that I had two choices at that time. It was either quit somehow or go to prison. And I knew that I couldn't quit. I'd been through four different rehabs by that time, none of them successful. I'd been through methadone maintenance. Uh, I'd been through the withdrawals more times than I could count. Um, so I knew that I couldn't quit. And it seemed better to me to die on my own terms than to live in prison on someone else's. I mean, if you look at me, you'll see that I'm not really the kind of guy who would thrive in a prison situation, <laughs> right? So I knew what I had to do. But at the same time, I didn't feel that I could make a move like that without at least saying goodbye to my parents and letting them know that none of what I'd been through had been their fault. So I went to my folks' house that day, and I remember my father wasn't home, but my mother was, and we sat down, and we started talking about how crazy this all was. Um, and at some point in the conversation, I said, hypothetically, Mom, I just want you to know if anything ever happened to me, I want you to know none of this was your fault. And she saw right through that. I mean, I'll never forget the change that came over her. She saw where I was going. And she said to me, Albie, if you die, we're the ones who suffer. We're the ones who are left here to pick up the pieces. We're the ones who have to suffer through the havoc that you've wrought. And something in me cracked. I mean, it just cracked. Because when you're high, you stop feeling things. But at that point, I felt emotion for the first time in years. And I said I'd try again. And when I said I'd try again, something happened. Uh, I changed. Maybe I didn't change, but something changed. And I was accepted into drug court. And with the structure and the support of drug court, I found a, a job. And once I had a job, I got a place to live so that I wasn't homeless anymore. Um, things just started to go my way. And that ended up with years later, my going to law school. And shortly after that, I ended up uh, working in the same public defender's office that had represented me on my charge <laughs> years before that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and this last February, I was appointed as a magistrate in the drug court that saved my life 20 years ago. Thank you. And now I have this incredible wife and this amazing daughter and this life that is so unbelievably uh, wonderful, I can't even explain it. And I have to say, I could not have done it without drug court. So thank you, all of you, for all that you do for people like me. You're amazing. Thank you. Can I say this to this? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much.
speaking this or you want this? I'll just do this. Okay. Hello. My name is Demetria Trujillo, and I met Elby while we were both public defenders in Denver. And when we met, one of the first things that attracted me to him was his life story. And you got a very short version of it. But I'll tell you that but for drug court, I know that Albie's life would have taken a very different direction and he'd be in a very terrible place today. And but for drug court, I never would have met him and we never would have had Lola. And for that, I am thankful. My name is Amanda Schlitt. I'm 36 years old, and on the 25th of this month, I've been clean for seven years. I'm going to try to get through this without bawling for three minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been blessed enough to share my story here. I started using weed and alcohol when I was very young. I dropped out of school before finishing the eighth grade. I can remember never feeling good enough and never knowing my worth. I had my children very young and I worked very hard to take care of them, but it was really hard for me to keep up. When my youngest son was very young, I began using meth. I always said that one line cost me a lifetime. I went from snorting and smoking, and it wasn't long before I started sticking needles in my arms. Abusing myself and allowing others to abuse me seemed to come natural to me. I left my boy's dad, and I completely lost control over my life. I hated who I had become. I was full of guilt and shame, and I couldn't stop. I managed to lose everything that mattered to me, and worst of all, my children. My daughter, at seven, was found in a house packed with dope and several adults. She had ran to hide, and she crawled up in a rolled-up piece of carpet in a back room where eventually she was found, because that's what I had told her to do if the police came. At that point, I didn't want to live anymore. I risked my life every day, and I would sit in the bathroom for hours trying to hit myself with blood everywhere. At times, my entire body was bruised, and I'm still scarred. What do you do when you look in the mirror and you're disgusted by yourself? I would go to visits with my children, and they would be dragged away from me, screaming. I felt worthless and helpless. I had three beautiful babies, and I couldn't stop using to save my own own life, much less to get them back. Eventually, I was put on a two-year SIS for possession. It was a really good deal for all I had done. I would see my PO lie about everything, pass my drug test, walk straight up the hill, and get high. I would get dry out for a couple days, and then I'd do it again the next week. Well, you can't do that for very long. <laughs> I made it three weeks before I was arrested at home with a whole lot of chemicals and drugs that didn't belong to me. But it didn't matter. I thought I was being loyal to my friends. I claimed what was mine, and I waited for them to come and save me. They never came. I spent three months in jail, and I bonded out before I had to start my prison sentence. I started getting high again. I went to prison treatment for four months, and I was released, and all of a sudden I had to be in this new drug court program with all these rules, and nobody thought that I would make it, including me. I wanted to live differently, but had no idea how. I had no car, license, job, or clothes, not even an eighth grade education. Drug court was structured and tough and exactly what I needed. And because of drug court, I managed to get a job, working my way from a crew member to a general manager in less than two years. They trusted me to manage over 20 crew and run a business that made almost a million dollars a year. Can you believe that? <laughs> I had my license back, 
I had insurance and a legal vehicle. Before this, I had a car that had two different license plates on it, and it didn't come anywhere near having insurance on it. <laughs> the idea was if they saw the tags, they wouldn't get me. <laughs> um, I even managed at 30 to get my GED. I was beginning to build a relationship. <laughs> I was beginning to build a relationship back with my children. People in my life trusted me more every day. The groups allowed me to work through a lifetime of issues and gain, gain strength. Drug court saved my life and gave my kids a mom to be proud of. Addiction has destroyed my family. My brother is an alcoholic. He went to prison for child support and he hung himself. It didn't work. When I go to visit him, I have to make sure he can remember my name. I have another sister that's an alcoholic, and her body is shutting down. But she cannot gain the strength to save her own life. Got it. Mm -hmm. Last September, my 31-year-old baby sister was found dead in the storage building of a junkyard, of an overdose. I will not allow this disease to take my life. Today, I do whatever I can do to be of service to give back, to heal myself, and in hopes of saving others like us. I've worked for the same company for almost six years, and I'm determined to go to school and work in the treatment field that I am so passionate about. And I'm so passionate about drug court. Drug court saved my life. I've spoken at a middle school and an annual convention, and I'm always nervous and afraid like I am now. But I've learned the most important things that I'm going to do, I'm going to have to do afraid. Thank you, Crawford County Drug Court, for not giving me my life back, but for giving me a life. Believing in me when I, I couldn't even believe in myself. Now when the local police approach me, it's to say how proud they are of me, not to arrest me. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Brittany Miller. I'm my mom's oldest. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you when I realized that my mom was doing anything wrong. I'm just like my mom. I'm probably going to get really emotional. <laughs> but I was fascinated by her in so many ways. She was pretty and funny and just everything that I wanted in a mom. She was using then, but I didn't think, I didn't even know it. She pulled us out of school and was hiding us from the police for several months. I got taken from her when I was seven. And sadly, it's one of my most clear memories that I have even till this day. My mom's friends were smoking meth when we, were, we all heard a bang at the door. And it's like we all knew it was the police. They hid the drugs in the vent and scattered. I was put in foster care starting that night for three years. I was so lost. Everyone, including my family, really believed they didn't, that she didn't care about anything but the meth anymore and that she would never change. I even started to believe that. I realized later that it's not that she didn't care or that she didn't love me and my brothers enough to try and get clean and get us back. It's that she forgot how to care about us or love anyone, including herself. Drug court has changed my mom back to the beautiful and funny woman that I missed for so many years. She's made me proud for coming so far and for proving everyone wrong. We shouldn't feel at all discouraged by not being able to help everyone because it affects too many people in a positive way to give up. The hardest part of believing, the hardest part of all this is believing that you can overcome what mistakes you've made and making it in this world again after you've already forgotten how to. Her goal for the new future 
is to help people that want the help but are just too scared of failing, just like she was. Her past has made her who she is, and she's going to change lives, just like Drug Court has. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Nick Jameson. I'm Amanda's middle child. Uh, can't tell because I look older than her. She's just really short. Um, I'd like to start off by saying I'm really nervous, and since Brittany didn't cry, I guess I can't. Uh, uh, I'd also like to thank everyone for making this possible. Um, it's amazing here, and it's amazing to see all of you who are just as dedicated to this as my mom is. Uh, it, Drug Court is an amazing program, and it's giving it's given me my mom back. It's given us a life. I remember asking my mom a couple years ago, you know, why do people use? Uh, I just didn't understand it. I didn't, I didn't see why. I saw how awful it was, and I saw what it did to us. And she said she can't speak for everyone, but she did it because she wanted to feel any way other than how she felt that day. Um, she said it's like that for a lot of people. They just want to feel something different and escape. And drug court gave my mom a life that she doesn't have to escape from. Um, I'd just like to thank you guys so much for what you do. Uh, I love my mom so much, and I'm proud of her. <laughs> I know I'm not always the best son. <laughs> and I refuse to take pictures with her. <laughs> M my friend asked me if I was embarrassed. I, I told him why I was going to DC, and I told him that I was going to speak. Um, I didn't tell him how scary I was, it was going to be. But they asked if I was embarrassed, and I said, no, it, anyone can fall into addiction. Um, out in this crowd is a diverse group, but they're all here for the same reason. And addicts are everywhere. It, it can be anyone. It can be a judge's son. It can be a fisher's son. It doesn't matter. I'm proud of my mom. It takes a strong person to stand up to addiction and to do what she did. So I'd like to thank you again. And I'd like to say how proud I am of my mom. I'm Cameron Jameson, her youngest son. And I was really young when my mom left. I missed her a lot while she was gone. I just want to thank you. Thank you for giving her my mom back. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm from Cumberland County, New Jersey. I was sentenced into drug court uh, October 17, 2002. Uh, I'm nervous. My clean date is September 30th, 2002, which means I'd like to identify myself as a person in long-term recovery because of drug court. Um, <laughs> prior to that, um, I, just, I have a short, brief period of time to share my hope with you, but I identify with everyone who shared before me. Um, I wasn't raised the way that my life was turning out. When my addiction really took off, I was so filled with shame. Um, how I became an addict, I was involved with a man who was a drug dealer, and I just dropped out of college. I abandoned everything, and I, be, I abandoned myself, and I hid from my family, and I caused them a lot of pain, and I'm so grateful to Drug Court for helping me repair my fractured life. And one of the moment, greatest moments of clarity that I had about my addiction was when I became pregnant with my oldest child. And I realized that my addiction was a problem. And then uh, I was only able to stay clean for a short period of time. And in my self-centeredness and my addiction, back in 1998, my parents ended up taking care of, of my oldest child. And um, drug court was new in 2002 in my county. And because I wasn't taking care of my responsibilities as a woman and as a mother, 
I just, I was trying to run from myself. And there's one person I'll never get away from, and that's me. But um, the drugs stopped working. But by that point, I was so addicted. I was so filled with shame. I was in the streets. I had a street name. And I didn't even know who I was. And I felt so hopeless. Um, I felt like my life was over. And I was in my mid-20s. I had suicide attempts. I'm so glad that I lived. Um, but I felt such shame because I wasn't taking care of my responsibilities. This is not how my life was supposed to be. And I used to cry when I was using and say, why am I like this? What is wrong with me? And, um, and then my addiction continued to progress and I ended up pregnant again. And um, my mother had said to me one day, she said, I'm gonna say it nice, but she said it. <laughs> There's a new program called Drug Court. Uh, you can get help for your problem, whatever's wrong with you. Why don't you sign up for it? You can get help. And I heard, she heard, I can get help. I heard, I'll stay out of jail. So I signed up for it. <laughs> That's how I got involved with Drug Court, because remember, my mind is twisted. I'm not thinking straight at that point. I just want to escape from responsibility. I don't know how to live life on life's terms. My mind is like scrambled eggs. And, uh, but I'm so grateful. I had no idea, really, until many years later, that I was prison bound. I'm a woman, and a, a lady shouldn't go to prison. And, um, oh man. So I signed up for drug court, and um, I was pregnant. And I didn't show up for my first, somehow I showed up for the first interview, and they accepted me. But when it came time for pre-sentencing, I didn't show up. Big surprise, because they told me, Melissa, when you come back next week, you can't use, and you have to go to meetings. Yeah, as soon as they said that, the judge was like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I didn't hear anything after that. And in my mind, I'm already playing the tape. Catch me when you can, because. So they didn't catch me. Well, they did. It. The judge sent the sheriff to my apartment on September 29th, September 30th, 2002, which is my clean date. And I, I, was, I did my pregnancy in jail. Um, and I, my water broke in cell block 2022. And um, all these things, and then they sent me to long-term treatment. I didn't think I needed treatment. I'm so grateful. They gave me a full continuum of care, long-term treatment, followed by a halfway house, followed by intensive outpatient. I needed it all. And today, I want to say that I am a mother to both my children. I am a, a daughter. I used to cause my family shame. Now I'm a source of pride and joy. My middle name is Joy. I forgot that. My parents gave me a name when I was born. The doctor didn't say, here's your skeezer. They named me. <laughs> they named me Melissa Joy. I forgot that. But I am so grateful. Thank you. And um, I just want to say about I'm now, because of drug court, I'm a productive citizen. The way drug court is structured, the way it's uh, staggered and stepped down, sometimes the intense cravings for me to use, one of the only things that kept me from not using was knowing that I had to submit a urine screen. And that's the truth. It's very effective. And, um, and then I got my, because I'm not one of those that, the cravings stay with me for a long time, and I had drug dreams for years, years, years. Sometimes I still have them, and I'm almost 11 years without the use of any substance. And I've been traumatized out there in the streets. I've been through a lot. And um, I get a big kick out of when I'm with normal people that they would never know what I've been through unless I choose to tell you. Um, I, I'm a citizen. I'm respected in my community. I have a high position in my community. I'm a mother, a daughter. I'm a taxpayer. Um, Homeowner. I'm a homeowner. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Tell you. And I'm single. I'm a single mom. I'm doing it all on my own with the help of my parents. I love you guys so much. And I'm so grateful for Drug Court. It's so important. And I hope in New Jersey they expand. And that's it. So this is my dad. Yes, yeah, you see, standing before you, a proud father, Melissa, like she said, Joy, Joy Niles. She finally brought Joy back into our lives 11 years ago. 
If the state of New Jersey hadn't expanded their drug program to Cumberland County, I don't know what would have happened to my daughter, Melissa. She was on a path to destruct, total destruction. She had been on drugs for a long period of time. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Arrest, jail, psychiatric hospitals, walking the streets. Unfortunately, she did it all. She went to several different rehabs, all with the same result. She might be okay for a couple of weeks, but she always went back to the drugs. Then something happened in 2002. She was arrested again. Drug court had just come to Cumberland County. Melissa made the smartest decision of her life. She applied to drug court and was accepted. She went from jail to six-month rehab in Atlantic City. From there, she went to a halfway house for 90 days, and then she came home. We were so worried that she would go back to her old ways. But thank God, this time was different. She went back to college, got a part-time job, graduated, and then went on to get her master's degree. No one would believe No one would believe that she's now employed by the same Cumberland County, New Jersey, that saved her. Her title, Assistant Director, Super, Supervisor, Programma, Programmatic County Alliance Coordinator for Cumberland County Alcohol, Drug, and Abuse Services. Smile, Daddy. Smile. Our family is so proud and grateful to Drug Corps for giving Melissa the opportunity to turn her life around. Without it, who knows where she would be today? Thank you. Good morning, all. This morning, I would like to start by telling you who I am not. I am no longer PDID number 468498. I am no longer DCDC DC number 300483. I am no longer a public nuisance. I am no longer the one that sits in your hallway getting high while you have to step over top of me to go to work. I am no longer the one that hides from her children in shame because I hadn't been home in days. I am no longer the neglectful mother who was clueless she was neglecting her child. I am no longer called crackhead or dope fiend. I am no longer worthless because today I know that God makes no junk. I am Karen Christian and I am a grateful recovering addict. And just for today, I am a person who has been clean for 3,024 days. For those that don't know, that means that for the last eight years, three months and 11 days, I have not found it necessary to use anything that alters how I feel or think. I started using drugs at the age of 13 and abusing them at the age of 22. My prayers of help were answered on April 12, 2004. The Metropolitan DC Vice Squad officers took my daughter away from me when I was arrested in a then drug infested area of DC near the Howard Theater on the corner of 7th and T Street Northwest. I still hear her screaming for me to this day and that's the same pain that I felt then that keeps me clean now. My daughter was placed in foster care, and from April of 04 to 05, I smoked crack and heroin, trying to ease the pain of her not being with me. Since I didn't have her, I didn't want to be here anymore. And I would ask God that if this is, that if this is all he had for me, that I don't want to do this anymore. But that wasn't God's plan for me. Today, I'm employed as an office manager. I volunteer for the court and other community organizations. And most importantly, most importantly, I have an awesome relationship with a really cool kid, my daughter, Asia.
today, today I get to be her mom. I also recognize that in order for me to be her mom, I have to be a recovering addict. And being her mom is so totally worth it. Life has its ups and downs, but she and I are a team and play this game of life on its terms. My daughter attends a Catholic school in the D.C. area, and hopefully, through grace and mercy and hard work on her part, will attend St. John's High School next year. I want to thank my judge, Pam Gray, and the D.C. Superior Court Family Treatment Court. This drug court program is a reunification program which allowed my daughter to live with me while I was in inpatient residential treatment for six months. After treatment, we moved to Catholic Charities Transitional Program for one year. We completed that and have not looked back. Having her with me in treatment removed the stress of wondering how she was doing and what was going on with her in foster care, which allowed me to focus on me and my recovery. It allowed her to avoid more time in foster care, lessening the pain of extended separation. I successfully completed all phases of my program, and Judge Gray closed my case in May of 2007, giving me full custody of my daughter, Asia. I am very sure, had the D.C. Superior Court's Family Treatment Court program not been available to me, I would not be here with you now. I am not sure that I would even be alive now. Drug court programs save lives and give people who suffer from substance abuse and their children meaningful second chances. I am so grateful for the second chance, and I work to make the most of every day I have clean and to improve myself, my family, and my community. Life always offers you a second chance. It's called tomorrow. God bless you all, and thank you so very much for allowing me to share. My name is Asia, and I would like to thank Judge Gray and FTC for letting me go live with my mom while she was in treatment. Being able to live with my mom got me out of foster care and helped her because she could stop worrying about me and get clean. Thank you again for letting me live the life that I have because without your help, I don't think I would have my mom or the life that I know. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Quanisha Celia Hines, and me and my family are from Newport News, Virginia. I am 21 years old, and I graduated from the Newport News Juvenile Drug Court in 2008. I am very pleased to be here, and it is an honor to share my story with you all. My biological mother was incarcerated with, with while she was pregnant with me. So my mother, Dolores Hines, and the late Hersley Hines, my father, took me into their home when I was two days old, and they fought a very stressful adoption um, due to their age. My father passed away when I was six years old, so my mother had to be both parents for me um, while growing up. Um, I exploited the age difference. I took advantage, I was disrespectful, and I started drinking and, uh, alcohol and smoking marijuana when I was 11 years old. Um, I was very disruptive in school, and I fought anyone that I felt like was a threat to me. Uh, my attitude needed to be adjusted. <laughs> it, my first appearance in court, um, I was charged with unauthorized use of a vehicle. I stole my mother's car and I crashed it into a dumpster. Um, I, after I was released from detention, I was put on probation. Um, probation, though it seemed minor, I made it so much more than it needed to be. I violated curfew. I was still um, disruptive in school. And most of all, I was disrespecting my mother. Um, the one thing that I could say that I was passionate about was my academics, but by my 10th grade year, um, due to heavy drinking, I, the very component that may have kept me out of detention uh, began to crumble. 
I was drinking a, a six pack to myself every single night and um, I managed to gather a bottle of, of liquor on the weekends. Summer nights, school nights, it, it didn't matter. Um, after numerous incarcerations, I was faced with an ultimatum. It was either the drug court program or the post-dispositional program, which required me to serve a minimum of six months in secure detention. So I chose wisely. I chose drug court. <laughs> and um, the beginning was very rough. I had issues transi transitioning um, into therapy, and I still needed to adjust my attitude. <laughs> um, <laughs> Drug court, though, it ensured that I brought my grades up, that I respected my mother, and most of all, that I stayed clean. They were consistent and stern with their praises and their sanctions, um, along with an outstanding support system. They made me realize that the investment to a successful future was far more valuable than the lifestyle that I was living before drug court um, as, uh, as a substance abuser. Finally, they restored the communication between me and my family. Um, I graduated into, I completed drug court program in 2008, and I graduated from Denby High School in 2009. Just two months ago, I graduated from Old Dominion University with my bachelor in science degree. <laughs> Majoring in criminal justice and minoring in psychology. <laughs> I also applied to law school uh, with the help of the drug court staff and was accepted to three schools. Thank you. I will, be, uh, I will be attending North Carolina Central University School of Law this upcoming fall. And you see, five years later, drug court, my drug court family is still supports me, and they're still my support system and making sure that I do well in life. My true motivation is my mother. Um, through all the psychological and the physical strain that I put her through and my sister, they stood by me every single day. Um, Anytime I feel like giving up, I think about how happy they were when I completed my first year of college. And the least that I can do is to stay on the right path for my mother, my sister, and my drug court family. So in, in, closing, in closing, I want to thank all of you because I can be utilized as a vessel of change for youth striving to change their lives. The work that you guys do on a daily basis is phenomenal. Without individuals like you, I may have chosen a completely different lifestyle. In your patience, your firmness, and consistent praises and sanctions that help young people like me to see their assets and become motivated to change. Thank you. My name is Dolores Hines. I'm Quanisha's mother. First, I want to give on to God and their praises. Thank him for a wonderful idea that he put forth to these different people. One for drug court program. I don't know where my daughter would have gone because she was really headed for the wrong direction. With the help of the team and the drug court, she is a changed person. I always loved her from the day I picked her up, which was 21 years ago. And I still love her and always will. And I want to thank you all again. God bless. Good morning. My name is Sheila and I'm Kwanisha's sister. And I'd like to thank the drug court for the many things they have done for her and they're still doing. Like my mother said, Kwanisha has come a long way, but I never gave up on her. She always had a space in my heart. 
and I loved her and I stuck by her through all the situations she went through during her life. And I thank God for her and the long way she have came. And Kwanisha, your life has really just begun and I wish you the best in law school. You have really made me happy. Thank you. Good morning. Today is my 28th birthday. Because of you, I stand here before you alive, free, and the graduate of the 2006 Coconino County Drug Court in Flagstaff, Arizona. Because of you, I have never had a legal drink. Because of you, I don't ever have to drink again. Because of a group of people, prosecutors and case managers and addiction professionals, I have a life today worth living that beyond my imagination. I started using when I was 12. By the time I was 14, I was a full-blown cocaine addict. By the time I was 16, I had a DUI. By the time I was 17, I was an intravenous heroin user. When I was 18, I went to my pediatrician and she said, we're going to have to take off your arm because the flesh-eating bacteria has gotten too bad. By the time I was 20, I was transporting illegal immigrants and burglarizing pharmacies to support my habit. Some 20 plus felonies later, and most of my 20th year of age incarcerated, drug court saved my life. The drug court team brought me back to life. Since drug court, I've put on 45 pounds, some of that being muscle, some of that chocolate. Today, I pay a lot of taxes, so most of you can thank me for your checks later. <laughs> a guy like me would not do well in prison, so thank you for saving my sweet bottom from a world of hurt. <laughs> Today, I work in addiction, and we've all heard of the butterfly effect. In the past seven years, I've helped hundreds of families help their loved ones get into treatment. So you may never know how hard your work will affect people that you may never meet and they thank you. We all thank you for giving us our lives back. Today, I have a career. The beautiful woman on the stage, uh, on the photo, recently said that she would marry me. That's because of you, that's a miracle. We just bought a home, and I am so incredibly grateful that my parents are standing here by my side. Hi, my name is William McLean, and I am the father of this drug court graduate. 75% of drug court grads never see handcuffs again. Therefore, it lowers crime rates. And every dollar spent saves over $3 to the local community in criminal cost. But you know what? It's a lot more than that. It's not about just the the impressive statistics and the money that is so much needed. You see, the drug court program gave, me my, gave my son the opportunity to get help for his illness instead of being punished for it. But it's even more than that to me. Today I stand before you with tears of joy because I am with my son on his 28th birthday, instead of at his gravesite with tears of sorrow. I am very proud that my son has chosen the career path to help others with their illness. And I want to take this time to thank the public defenders the private attorneys, the judges, the probation officers, the office staffs that work so hard in providing this wonderful program to people they have never even known. But I want to thank you for saving my son's life. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sue McLean and I'm Adam's mom. My son is an amazing person, 
He's a recovering addict and a drug court graduate. When Adam started using and getting into trouble, I thought that if we loved him enough, that we could help him. But we didn't know what to do to help him or ourselves. When he was arrested, it broke my heart to talk to him through a pane of glass. I never could have imagined that that could be happening. With multiple felony charges pending, Adam pled into Coconino County Drug Court. He had some turbulent times in the program, but due to his own courage and perseverance and the incredible support of the drug court team, especially his attorney, Kevin O'Brien, and his probation officer, Michelle Hart, Adam was able to turn his life around to be the young man that you see before you today. He couldn't have done it without this amazing drug court program. Adam's achievements since becoming sober six and a half years ago are amazing. We are so proud of him. Today he is happy and healthy instead of dead or in prison. I am grateful to drug court every day to have my son back. Thank you. So people change. What an amazing, that's my favorite part. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. And, oh, oh, oh. I don't know how you follow that, but I guess maybe you follow it by saying that, uh, I'm not saying that this opening ceremony is, is running long, but I am six months more sober than I was the last time I was up here. <laughs> <laughs>